Hi there, Michael here. Um, so today I want to talk about a little bit about the skeletal structure and I want to go over in greater detail how that applies to you and just the regions and the part of the spine and this, this non-specific sides to your spine and how those correlate to hurting your actual spine and where you feel that pain. So as you can see here, we have a spine. We have the rib cages. I'm um, just going from, you know, the cervical spine to a thoracic spine in the middle and then to the lumbar spine. Um, as you can see here, we have a clear image of that without the discs in between, which we'll work with. Um, but we have all the vertebrae from bottom, L5, all the way to uh, the cervical spine. And so we have everything else in between. Um, and so just knowing these areas, just understanding them better and getting a closer look at how your pain translates to this. So right now, this spine right here, if we look at it, it's in a good position right now. It's not facing forward in that like anterior pelvic uh, tilt position or in an anterior pelvic tilt position uh, back and forth. So what we're looking at is something good at this moment. We're not looking at a, a spine that's curved in a like kyphosis state. We're looking at it in a in a fairly well uh, structured spine. Let me see if I can zoom in here just a little bit. Still trying to play around with this. There we go. So if we take a look deeper, we're looking at the vertebrae. So we're looking at our discs. Here's our lumbar L2. So we start from L L1 here, and we get down to L5. And so behind these vertebrae, invertible vertebrae, we have our facet joints. Um, so the lumbar vertebrae is right there, otherwise called as invertible. And then we have the uh, the back of the spine, which is where the facet joints lie, which is this part right here. This part right here. And, you know, in between right here in this space, we would have the discs. So in this space, we would have like the, the annulus fibrosis and nucleus fibrosis, pupillosis, and just the water um, inside the discs. It's not so much you need to know the names. I'm just going about it that way. But just, um, you know, when that inside, you have a disc right here, blue discs with water inside it, and when that protrudes, when the nucleus pulposus, which is the very inside, there's two like rings inside. So you have the outside of the, of the disc, and then in the inside you have, which is like the annulus fibrosis, and then you have the nu nucleus pupillosis uh, in the middle. And then when that part protrudes, it's gonna leak out more water outside to the outer discs and the inside still, and then it's gonna protrude to the back so it's going to likely come right here, and this is where your spine is. You don't have a spine here clearly. But what would happen is that that water would hit there, and then your disc would protrude back, which in turn would cause a herniated disc to appear. Okay. Now right here we're looking at the hip bone, the right hip bone, and then we're looking at the left hip bone. I can zoom out here. I'll just go with this. It's a deeper look. It's your rib cage cover in it. And then let's take. Let's see if I can play around with this for a little bit. Okay. So now back here, the sacrum. Okay, this is where your buttocks are going to meet at your back, just below the uh, the L5 vertebrae, where, right where the sec uh, the uh, uh, the S1 joints correlate, and then just below that you have the coccyx, otherwise known as the tailbone. And so here you have your sacroiliac joints, your sacroiliac, uh, you'd have ligaments right here. 
you have nerves actually coming through this part right here and up to your spine. So it come down like that. So basically, you know, a lot of the reasons why you have pain are because of these symptoms that happen in the spine, whether it's a thinning disc, um, whether it's uh, bulging disc pain, whether it's, you know, like I said, a thinning disc, a herniated disc, a degenerative disc, all these things contribute to a lot of the pain you feel. And for a lot of us who have osteoarthritis and, and things like that, of that nature, um, you know, it'll, it'll weaken the, um, so then get in here. So it'll weaken the vertebrae. So if you look at the vertebrae, you know, it's got already little scars and wear and tear right here. Well, that's what it will end up happening. Your vertebrae is going to start wearing down, breaking down, uh, and it's going to be hard for you to retain cartilage, especially around your joints. Um, so you have to nurture that. And how do you nurture that? You nurture that with remedies. You nurture that with supplementing. You, you, nurture, you nurture that with creams, um, things that have glucosamine with chondotrine, chondotrine, and all that stuff works. So I won't go too far into that. I just want to show you today the more so the the skeletal structure um, pertaining your back, you know, and then if you go higher, uh, we have your ribs there. We have this thoracic vertebrae, T11, T11, and then we just continue going up, making our way up, you know, until we get vertebrae by vertebrae. We're going back to the C7, C5, so now we're getting closer to the neck. And so just taking care of this part of the spine is going to come in handy. Uh, so you really have to take care of these muscles right here, especially these ones for your buttocks. Because if these are weak, chances are your sacrum is going to feel weak and then your tailbone is going to fall. So it's all a domino effect. If these muscles are not strong, you're going to sag. And then what's going to happen is you're, you're going to end up pushing your, your spine out further. And when that happens, is your, your belly is going to start reacting with that. And your abdominal muscles are going to get even weaker. Um, so, you know, you got to work also on the bottom portion of your body. Um, you got to work on that part as just as well. And you got to understand that, you know, you have a muscle imbalance. If you're having back pain, you're having a muscle imbalance and it's happening below the body too. It's happening in the hamstrings. Um, let's see if I can take a picture here. So it's happening just in these muscles right here. So if you don't have strong thighs, if you don't have a strong leg, uh, we won't go too much into the names. I know I know them very well, but I'm not going to go over them. Uh, but see how your spine is connected here to your hamstrings. This would be right here. This is what we're talking about, the pelvis. And so we're talking about the right side right now of your body. And you know how these ligaments are attached. And then we have... You would have the spinal cord from your back reaching down all the way to the bottom, just about right here to above the knee. And so these things can cause pain. They cause things like sciatica if you let a herniated disc continue. Um, and you just got to take care of that. The femur right here. Um, just having good balance is what matters, having good posture, uh, cleaning up on your exercising, focusing on um, consuming the right uh, oral prescriptions and uh, taking the right creams and, and stuff like that's going to really help you in the process of making sure you have a proper posture, making sure you have those muscle balances in your body correctly. So that's what I just want to leave you with uh, today. And I want to say thank you for being here today. Uh, I only, only wanted to keep it short for you. Uh, thank you.